know. I don't know what it was with that album. Well, I'll tell you what it was. How many songs was it? 16. Well, guess what? We're diving into 16 more today. You're on the next episode of Vital Stallions. Stallions, 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 Stallions. Uh, you heard it. We're diving into another mammoth of an album. Billie Eilish, Happier Than Ever, dropped in April 1st of 2021. So we are coming up to the one year anniversary of this album. This is the newest one, obviously, we've ever done. Yeah, um, recorded in 2021, like Spruce said, 16 songs. It's Billie Eilish's second album. Um, this was actually recorded in her brother Phineas's basement. Um, and if you haven't heard of Phineas, he actually has some of his own music himself. Um, but he's a producer. He produced Billie Eilish's first album as well. Um, yeah, this song actually has seven singles. So more singles than any song that we've reviewed or any album that we've reviewed. Um, and very interesting. Two of the singles came out before the whole album. Uh, wait, no. I take it back. So five of the singles were released before the album was released. One was released on the same day as the album, and then one was released after. So they are My Future, Therefore I Am, Your Power, Lost Cause, NDA, Happier Than Ever, and Male Fantasy. And that's the order in which they were released as well. Dang, that is that is definitely a lot of singles to put out, but hey, when you have 16 songs to do it and you are on top of the world as Billie Eilish has been the last couple of years, put all of them out because, uh, I mean, they're going to get that hype and well-deserved as well. Um, this album, man, so I mean, I literally heard about Billie Eilish from like this kid that I worked with and we were listening like I, he asked me to drive him home one time from work back in 2019 and we were just like bumping some tunes and he's like oh you guys like Billie Eilish and I was like what is a Billie Eilish like I don't even <laughs> I, I have I had never heard of anything and I was uh, pretty biased to like the radio pop and whatnot which sometimes I still am but I've honestly come around more recently to listening to like um i don't know like pop like like dua lipo or olivia Arrigo and stuff like that that's very recent and killing the game right now and they're great stuff even for the rep that uh that i don't know radio air pop radio gets but anyway i uh heard about billy eilish didn't really dive in until like last year probably around this time honestly it was right before this album came out and she had some great songs in her first uh album uh that came out i think that one came out in 2019 yep sure did and what was the name of that one is like where do we go when we all fall asleep I believe uh, I know that. let me look it up yeah, okay, yeah. I, I know it has the song bad guy on it yeah and, and that, that was, was like the most fa yeah, famous one it had some other great ones as well but uh, yeah, so I heard about her a little bit here, but like I honestly saw her documentary then, which came out on Apple TV sometime about a year ago, and I was ready for this album. And I'm going to tell you right now that this was probably my most listened to album last year. Like, honestly, uh, from start to finish, didn't really listen to too many albums, but this was one that just kept popping up. Um, and I really enjoy it, man. It's just different than a lot of the other stuff she did on her other albums and a lot of stuff that's just even being put out in today's world it has that down tempo pop it's very sparse and i mean sparse by saying like very few instruments a lot of breathing room you hear her voice very clearly it has that jazz influence but then like electro pop as well and the combination of all of that is just given it to us as an audience in such a great way club 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 you told me like she's literally just telling a story throughout this whole album 
Mm -hmm. um, also, some quick trivia. If you had to guess, what do you think Billy Eilish's full name is? Well, I know it's Phineas. O Her brother is O'Connell. So I'm going to guess they're the O'Connells. I'm guessing Billy O'Connell for 500. Close. I mean, Billy and O'Connell are in the name, but here it is. And <laughs> get ready. It is Billy Eilish Pirate Baird O'Connell. There are five words in her full name. Dude, what, else? what Reddit page is that coming off? That is insane. No way. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Billy Irish Pirate Baird Pirate Pirate? I want to be named Pirate. Him. I'm naming my <laughs> firstborn son or dog's middle name Pirate. Honestly, any like I don't know. That's that's a, I had no idea. She got lucky, honestly, because Phineas is just Phineas O'Connell. <laughs> lame, <laughs> lame. <laughs> like, yeah, they had their oldest son and then the second. Uh, kid they were like let's get outrageous yeah so speaking of phineas he actually plays every instrument on this album um there is some drums that are programmed on it and i mean the songs where it's not an actual acoustic drum set he's doing the drum programming so basically any sound you hear on the album that isn't Billy singing is Phineas, whether he programmed it or actually recorded him playing the instrument, um, which I just, I just found crazy. very interesting. I mean, he's so, so talented, uh, honestly. He has his own albums out, but I mean, to be able to produce in your bedroom like that, win all those Grammys and then continue to just do it and be prominent at such a young age that's awesome that he that that they just work like that uh and they also work i know they work in like weekly schedules of recording a, a song each week i know is how they at least structured around this album uh, i know they were recorded between april 1st 2020 and then february 16th 21 um but we talked i mean we're talking about how great this is before we dive in uh it has seven grammy nominations what have they won? We don't know because the Grammys is April 3rd this year. Uh, so this just shows Final Stallions is relevant. We'll be catching it back up on how many she wins, but it's nominated for seven Grammys this year. Yes, it is. Um, well, anything else before we dive into these tracks? Nope. Let's do it. All right, so 56 minutes and seven seconds is the length of this album. And it begins with the song Getting Older. And so these first three songs hit differently for me. I just feel like they flow so perfectly together and starting with Getting Older. Um, and honestly, something we've talked about so much, and maybe it's just something in music that is just like, of course, it's in there, but we're just calling out is just that heartbeat again of a song of the album. Dun, 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 dun. And like, that's how that whole album just starts out with her saying she's getting older. Um, and a song just reflecting on just like past trauma and setting you up for everything to come. Um, I love <laughs> just diving into that kind of structure of why. They put it to like, I don't know, just how artists specifically structure albums. It's amazing. But yeah, that heartbeat is very prominent in this one. Yeah, and I, I think it's a good intro song that sets up the whole album and just sort of kind of sets the tone of what she's going to talk about in the album. Like it's sort of saying, you know, like as she's getting older, she's realizing like, she needs to stop doing things for other people, sort of, you know, like take care of her own needs, make sure she's happy. Um, yeah, honestly, very mature lyrics. Um, you know, Billy is only 20 years old. Kind of hard to believe when after you listen to this album. It is. And just to, her first song was Ocean Eyes, which was found 
on SoundCloud, I believe, at, at 13 years old. 13 yeah. years old of being in the spotlight and just now as well, just t- taking over the entire world, doing the world tour. Um, she's been through a lot. Yeah. Like I said, 20 years old. Um, dude, but these lyrics, like you said, are mature. There's that one line that specifically sticks with me at the end of the first verse where she's talking about, uh, I'm just going to read this. And she goes, there's reason that, that I'm thankful. There's a lot I'm grateful for. But it's different when a stranger is always waiting at your door, which is ironic because the stranger seemed to want me more than anybody before. And then she pauses and goes, too bad they're usually deranged. <laughs> 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 like, dude, what a, like that's literally the end of the first verse. Like, what do we do? <laughs> like that like that's that. incredible yeah dude that line is like oh man <laughs> like i it's so well put <laughs> yeah um but yeah from there so i mean getting older is mostly just an acoustic guitar musically um so when it goes into i didn't change my number it's pretty cool because you get like this wacky keyboard synth intro into the song um and billy's voice in this song like the word that i just keep thinking of to describe it is hypnotic dude this one is awesome there, it, no dude go back listen it's literally dogs barking uh to start the song and throughout the whole song they're just like rawr, rawr. <laughs> and, and it, it happens throughout it all uh and i think that dog is actually billy's pit bull named shark okay and so <laughs> shout out to shark <laughs> for making an appearance on the album uh but yeah mark this shark yeah <laughs> shout out to mark the shark. <laughs> uh but yeah just the lines like i only changed uh, who I replied to, I only changed who I believe in. So, like that's how she's like kind of starts off each verse. Like I didn't change my number. I only changed who I replied to. Like what another line straight, straight to the heart. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that ending uh, is kind of nuts as well in that song. Yeah. That was one of the notes that I put down for this song was just, wacky noises at end (laughs) yeah just like (laughs) yeah dude that one is good and then like i said these first three like i i i loved just running to this song or to this album but these first three led me to what i think is going to be my favorite song on this album uh billy bossa nova yeah this one that clean like blues guitar riff that you have throughout the song i i really like that oh yeah it's it's honestly like very jazzy and Mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah i wrote down the tone as well is very great um it's dude just the play on it again she's playing kind of like a character like a fake aliases at at different hotel check-ins um, and this one i i feel like is sort of like a seductive song if yeah. you will um like i know she's like one of the lyrics in there she she's talking about like not checking your phone dude it starts off love when it comes without a warning <laughs> like yeah. what a line! this woman can just create incredible lines that just stick because i just immediately go to like i don't know like Anything like a food product, just be like, who comes without a warning? Bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, but yeah, that one's good. And you said like it's a sex, like, like, I don't know, it's a saucy feel. And that's the Bossa Nova feel. And Billy honestly credits a gentleman by the name of Antonio Carlos Jobim. And that's J-O-B-I-M as in Mary, who is the founding father of Brazil Bossa Nova. And she okay. credits him for kind of that inspiration. But, dude, that Bossa Nova feel just, ooh, candlelight next to a fire, cheese boards, specifically goat cheese. I, f- I found that lyric I was talking about, and here it is. You better lock your phone 
and look at me when you're alone. <laughs> <laughs> Won't take a lot to get you going. I'm sorry if it's torture, though. If it's torture, and, though. <laughs> yeah, one, one other lyric that I just thought was crazy off this album makes me want to take a picture, make a movie with you that we'd have to hide. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> very very pg-13 right <Yeah>. there <laughs> no, billy doesn't give dude god i literally like these like she's honestly an inspiration but it's so funny to think she's 20 years old and i'm like looking up to her but dude she is such a just unbelievable at everything she does and the way she kind of receives herself like when you look at her you're just like or i don't know when you hear about her you're just like oh another pop person or whatnot but man her story with her brother and i don't know like everything she just like stands for and is as an artist i cannot wait to see what she makes in her 20s it is gonna kick my ass (laughs) yeah yeah no it's very interesting because like it seems like culturally like she's poised to be I'm trying to think of a good comparison, but I mean, sort of what you were alluding to, just like that pop star that is just going to be like that radio artist when like she could be so much and is so much more. Dude, and this, I mean, this album just shows it like the next one. So My Future, which was the lead single um, off of this, sitting at number four. Yeah, I didn't even realize this was Billie Eilish. I've heard this song on the radio for like two years now, and I had no idea it was Billie Eilish. Dude, yeah, I honestly, yeah, I didn't know it was a lead single. I didn't really know this one that well off the album because it starts slow. So it's like a soul and jazz inspiration, you can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, but it starts slow. But man, at one forty, drums kick dude, in. One forty-five. <laughs> just maybe, just don't fast forward to one forty-five. But like mentally prepare for that funk bass, the drums kicking in. Like, oh yeah. Like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and like I just and like my next note, I'm really singing the ah, like the response and call of that is great the use of multiple voices i like harmonizing like that is so big in music and it kicks ass and this like it's just her i know i I, i'm sure her brother honestly will probably add in some of that he's honestly a very good singer as well but uh yeah yeah and so then from there we go into oxytocin which I would assume is some sort of drug. I honestly don't know. (laughs) It's dubbed the love hormone. So it's like something that gets like released from like sexual activity or even just like hugs or something like when you like affection and you release your oxytocin. Uh, And one other thing to mention too, as we talk about oxytocin. So I mention this every album review because we are called Vinyl Stallions. So Oxytocin is the first song on side B. So it's a two disc vinyl. Um, And so yeah, side one of the first disc is those first four songs, Getting Older, I Didn't Change My Number, Billy Boss Nova, My Future. And then you flip it over to side two and just get slapped in the face with <laughs> the rave song oxytocin dude the, dude, <laughs> the club hit like i feel like oh, listening to this like i took too much i'm in like that scene from the hangover where like everything's moving and I'm like, yeah <laughs> billy was like all right we need uh we need one for the clubs <laughs> well one that the cl- one off this album that the clubs can play with a high degree of confidence dude yeah like i feel like it needs a strobe light like i just feel like everything needs to be dark like i feel like everyone should be wearing like masks i don't know where i am in this club <laughs> definitely in yeah, europe this, like this is europe. this is a song eon should buy yeah dude <laughs> <laughs> i do but uh the first verse in this line like again her lyrics are so great but she, like 
can't take it back once it's been set in motion <laughs> and like <laughs> that, that noise and then the second line is you know i love to rub it in like lotion <laughs> like <laughs> what a line oh my gosh what a line and so yeah it's interesting because that song like we're saying is a rave song and then it goes into Goldwing, which like for the first half of the song is acapella <laughs> so it's like one like completely different feel into another completely different feel and yeah like the one word i had to describe billy's voice in this song was angelic like i it felt like an angel was singing yeah i wrote church choir <laughs> like it yep. said that big <laughs> fill um i know she yeah it's very short it's two minutes 31 seconds but i don't know and it's mm -hmm. just talking about like uh just like kind of helping a time of vulnerability um but it's a good one yeah like right in the middle and leads me and you and everyone else to one of my favorite on the album lost cause sitting at number seven something's yeah. in the air right now yeah this is where the lyrics start to turn dark in the album um yeah i mean you can tell whoever she's talking about in this song like she's quite clearly dissatisfied with like i'll just pick out a lyric here <laughs> i sent you flowers did you even care you ran the shower and left them by the stairs i mean it just seems like she's talking about another person who just doesn't really understand like what she is looking for she's been patient with it and then this song is just like you know what i realize this person's not gonna change they're just a lost cause <laughs> uh yeah another one i thought you had your shit together but damn i was wrong, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong but dude that the bass right at the beginning like when she's like something's in the boom but up but up but up <laughs> like that shit is so good um it's like also has you can't really hear it that well because that bass just takes over but it has a lot of like it's like reverb soaked acoustic guitar in the back like mm -hmm. plucking at it and uh yeah what a great song i i really just bumped to this one yeah this this one's a great one and yeah like you said it was one of the singles off the album and then goes into Haley's comet which ends side two of the first disc yeah Haley's comment um the piano is really good in this one <laughs> I was surprised how much I enjoyed this one. I really, this was one I didn't, I don't know, just stuck in the middle of the album, number eight. Uh, but it's the most raw, I believe. But at least, yeah, honestly, it's most raw with the voice, honestly, on this album. Yeah, I think this song just overall is talking about sort of some of the inconveniences of falling in love, just sort of pointing out, like, with anything in life, you know, there's always good and bad, no matter how good something seems, there's always something, you can always find some sort of downside. And I mean, that goes the other way too, no matter how bad something see, seems, you can always find something positive about it. But yeah, I think here she's sort of talking about like, you know, you might have like this great relationship, this great love or whatever but there's always a trade-off and she's talking about that trade-off here with this song absolutely so we're halfway through hey uh this halftime show is brought to you by the saint bernadette bulldogs shout out to the saint bernadette bulldogs a prominent program on the west side of Cleveland. <laughs> the dogs absolutely trump anyone that uh thinks they're better than us uh go bulldogs 
let the dogs out. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Moving on, I'm number nine. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the Bulldogs. Um, not my responsibility is number nine, starting the second half of the album. Uh, before we dive into actually what this song and is, uh, just the beginning, and this is Phineas, like the intro noises going back and forth uh, through your ears. I don't know if you listen to these with like headphones on or uh, through your speaker, but it was going back and forth. And that's just a great producer yeah. trick that had me. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, well, I was sort of going off of what you're saying about like Phineas. So like Billy actually in this song says I'm sitting in my brother's room. Really? Dude, I mean, so yeah, so it's like whispered in there. Like, I bet if you look up the lyrics, it's probably not even included. It's sort of like the jagged little pill that like Alanis Morissette whispers during it might be you learn. I can't remember, but it's whispered. And I'm pretty sure if you look up the lyrics, it's not actually like in the lyrics, but same sort of deal. Like she says at one point like i'm sitting in my brother's room which she literally is this was recorded in phineas's basement (laughs) yeah but uh go ahead go ahead yeah no i just wanted to say so just like to give some kind of history on like what this actually was so it was actually in phineas's room uh because this was recorded back in 2019 as a film um that they would play during her her, where do we go uh, when we f- all fall asleep tour and what the f- video was was so this song is just her speaking the, f- the whole time and none mm-hmm. of it's sung but it addresses like public body shaming and what she's doing is like slowly taking off like layers of clothes just saying like uh it, basically like is this all you perceive me as like the ending lyrics to this go who decides what that makes me what that means is my value based only on your perception or is your opinion of me not my responsibility? Um, so she, I don't know, she gets slack for some reason for like wearing baggy clothes because it's apparently not what the women wear when they're performing and whatnot. When who cares? It's about the music. Like, yeah. like, 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 what the fuck? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but yeah, no. So, so it, so it was made. So she was in her brother's room before he even had the studio in his own basement. It was when they were making that first album. And uh, and then, yeah, she decided then to use it on this album as kind of like interlude to uh, the song that comes after. Yeah, no, I could I think it's just sort of talking about like how nonsensical expectations, if you will, will be placed on her for arbitrary things like due to her rise to celebrity status you know like it just i think she's sort of just making the point that these random expectations you place like on celebrities or public figures like a lot of it isn't really founded in logic or like a lot of it doesn't make sense like like you said like why does she need to like dress a certain way you know, like, like, why, why does it really matter? Like, she's a musician, like, it's, the music is all that should really matter. <laughs> yeah, it really should, but not today's uh, clickbait and everything that the attention span of our world <laughs> needs something new every day. So they'll find the smallest of things to make such a big article about, but I don't know. It's out of her control, but she wants to talk about it and continue to talk about it. And then number 10, Overheated, uh, which, like I said, not my responsibility. It's kind of like interlude into this, uh, which still addresses how she's been just objectified by the media, uh, body image, uh, self-worth. And the song has a very trancey feel to it, I think. Absolutely. No, it's it's another hidden one. It's Dude, all these songs are like honestly between like three 
20 and like three like 50 like there are like again 16 songs but under an hour um yeah so yeah they're straight to the point yeah happier than ever is the longest isn't it uh, yeah i believe so around five yeah that one's over oh just under five but yep i i got pulled up it is the longest one on the album yeah but uh, yeah they're all sticking around kind of that middle range um like the next one so the next one from there goes into everybody dies which is a great topic i really i really have been uh thinking about death recently and how everybody dies and how it's inevitable and billy eilish talks about it as well and finding comfort in that uh it happens to everyone and uh and that you can only yeah just do what you can about it and yeah i don't know it's a it's a obviously a hard-hitting topic when it comes to like death and stuff like that but and specifically i think she mentions like the naivety that you have to this when you're a child so like sort of the perils of growing up if you will you know when you're a kid like all you think about is just the world you have to explore as you get older and you're never really looking at what the end game might be and then she's like you kind of get older and then you realize that everyone just kind of dies <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's funny to i mean it's like not funny to joke about obviously like uh, but i don't know you got to put some light light into it because everybody dies um uh-huh. from there number 12 goes into another single uh but your power don't abuse your power and um, yeah dude and taking advantage of uh, but that simple acoustic is so great it's kind of like a folk ballad in a sense yeah that's very smooth and I think Billy chose this one as a single for like people were like, well, I don't know. It's like, I'd like, I don't know. You can argue whatever one you want as your favorite, but uh, she definitely said it came out publicly and said she chose this one specifically for the lyrics. Uh, she said this was what she thought was her or one of her strongest lyrics, at least on this album. Yeah. I mean, the lyrics are pretty powerful on this song and I I agree. I think it's no surprise that she picked this as a single. Um, yeah, uh, I think overall, just sort of talking about like an abusive or not necessarily abusive, although it could be abusive, but you know, just a relationship that went awry and sort of had problems with one person caring more than the other i think that's sort of what she means by don't abuse your power is like there's this understanding that the other person in the song cares less and with that they have more power and she's saying you know don't abuse that but as we get towards the end of the album i think it's clear that person does their power <laughs> and maybe you have to sign an nda <laughs> <laughs> yeah your power ends side one of disc two and as you said nda that kicks off the last side of the album so the d side of disc two nda this one had a I wrote quirky synth between verse and chorus. <laughs> yeah, right around the one minute mark. That, yeah. yeah, that wacky synth. <laughs> Shout out to Logic Pro. I know they use Logic Pro, and that's what I have. They 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 inspire me, man. <laughs> like these two inspire an entire generation. Yeah, yeah. the auto tune on her voice as you get a little deeper into the song is pretty cool too it reminds me of the 808s kanye album <laughs> yeah dude it's like dark as well it's, it has just a very dark feel um mm-hmm. actually so from there it goes like directly in to therefore i am like yep seamlessly and like great way to order it 
as far as the vinyl goes too because i'm sure if if you were listening to it on vinyl you would have no idea that they were two separate songs dude no idea uh dude this one bumps this one like i i just want to move back and forth uh i i remember again i started listening you to billy think that you're the man <laughs> i think therefore i am dude i love i love my favorite lines are stop what the hell are you talking about get my pretty name pretty name out of your out mouth, of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like yes god damn she's so good uh but dude this but yeah like uh this time last year so she released this i think in november of 2020 so like right when the pandemic was happening as like a single leading up to uh like the album coming out in 21 but she well it's just, it's just her running around the mall like with the song playing in the background like it's an empty mall uh and she's just jumping around eating like corn dogs eating chipotle and i'm like <laughs> that looks fun mm-hmm. but i always think about that and and this one it definitely has that most like bad like bad guy feel from her first album Yeah, and I can definitely see that. Um, but yeah, Therefore I Am goes right into the title track, Happier Than Ever. I mean, it might be cliche, but I think this is probably my favorite song off the album. Dude, It because it offers two songs in one, <laughs> like honestly. Um, and yeah. Billy, I... Yeah, yeah, sorry, but uh, but Billy just proved me wrong is all I got to say before we dive into this one. I have been dogging the second to last songs on the albums and this all these album reviews saying like, oh, it's a good one to put in, but blah, blah, blah. And she st- stumps me by putting the title track there. And, <laughs> and, and yeah, so yeah, dude, d- dive into this one. Tell me why it's your favorite. Um, well, yeah, like you said, it's like two songs in one. That that's pretty much the reason right there. And you want to know? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out a throwback from Family Guy, and I'm gonna ask you want to know what grinds my gears? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I've mentioned this before on another episode and i can't remember what song they did it to um but i remember being upset about it then too but they absolutely neuter this song on the radio and they basically cut out the first like two two and a half minutes of the song and start it right where it picks up i'm like what the like what what are you doing like you're cutting out like the like best parts of the song like it gives that whole build up the context you're like talking about you know like this relationship that's gone awry just like talking about like basically how much this dude sucks and then at the very end those two minutes that are like very dramatic she is just letting it all out like the emotion is just coming out and it's like who on the radio thinks it's a good idea to like just start right at that point like let her build to it let her give it the context that it deserves and then let it go ah i'll tell you who to blame it's that damn mgk making emo punk come back (laughs) <laughs> because that is what it, it's and, but honestly emo punk's coming back and that's kind of like what that second half of the song is just like those power chords and whatnot but yeah dude the ukulele at the beginning is the best part it just it it just puts you just like alone i feel like i'm just at the beach i'm just swaying yeah her voice is so charming in it Dude, in the music video, she's just alone in just like a hotel room, just playing the ukulele and like, uh, just kind of like waltzing around the room. It's so calming. And then, yeah, it gives that second half, the emo punk, some context. And it is, it is a beautiful song altogether. It does suck that they do that. Um, I know Eilish mm-hmm. says it's the most therapeutic song she has ever written. Um, yeah, yeah, you can feel it. <laughs> yeah, she lets it loose. <laughs> um but yeah so from there it goes into a song called male fantasy to close out the album and fun fact about this so this song 
uh, in February of 2021. So this was released April 1st. Was actually not going to be on the album. And they didn't want to end kind of on an angry note, which again is how happier than ever kind of ends. So she wanted to throw this in and it kind of like feel like credits is what she says. And uh, it does a really good job, honestly. It just, yeah, it does like, kind of lyrically, it just like summarizes the whole album. Yeah, dudes suck and they don't know how to treat <laughs> women, uh, yeah, to their standard. But it has that, uh, kind of T Swift feel, the acoustic, it's like almost country, honestly. Like, I feel like I'm listening to the early, mm-hmm. like, T Swift just laid out for me how I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do better. We all do. Quit living in your male fantasies. Yeah, I mean, somebody in Billie Eilish's position, I'm sure it's not always uh, come across the greatest dudes. (laughs) No, not at all. Um, But it does, like, also criticize the effects of, honestly, just, like, the male fantasies, like, watching porn and how just, like, unrealistic it is like all together, but also how it's just like uncomfortable to talk about. And she lays it out there because she's done it throughout the whole album. And I think we'll continue to do it because she has that platform to be able to say what she wants. And it's stuff that needs to be said. Death. Male fantasies. Eilish, tell me about them all. I like, like, (laughs) let them lose. These are what the people want to hear. I'm tired of hearing about twerking in a club. Yeah, yeah, no, much, uh, much better than a song about twerking in the club. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, rather hear about this than uh, big dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. We made it through another album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, like, just think about that for a second. You, you could listen to like a beautiful like piece of art like this or you could listen to wet ass pussy like just just like (laughs) think about it for a minute like those two songs like this they get similar airplay but like (laughs) one is not like the other (laughs) that just shows anything goes you throw it at the wall we talked about this with joe you throw it out the wall are the noodles ready if it sticks it sticks i don't even know um It's we usually don't talk ill of, of, of any music. On you know, and honestly, albums. like sometimes that music I do get down to and whatnot. But like when I'm really but that's like when I'm on about trying to dance and get my groove on. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, this album, man, is really, really great. A great sophomore album for her to show um, her versatility and just music. Phineas only showed how much greater of a producer and songwriter he is as well i mean along with billy obviously and yeah we'll see uh seven grammys again uh coming your way on april 3rd all right well that was the third album in our women in music album review series so it's time to find out what the fourth is gonna be oh my lanta all right um there it is it's the wheel of stallions all right i'm folding them up i haven't put them in my hat i've been looking all over for my hat and it's right fucking here all right time the right me all right, stallions, here we go. Brrr, come, they told me. Brr, um, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> we, need, we, we need a drummer boy. Next up, we have Dreamboat Annie by <laughs> Heart. We're throwing it back. We're throwing it back. You know when this album came out? Was it the 80s? No, oh, Nin- my I'm gonna guess 1974. I don't know crap. I don't know crap about heart. I am very excited to expand my knowledge. I do know this is their debut album. 
So let me, yeah, I'll pull it up right here. Dreamboat Annie, 1975. I was very close. You were. Yeah, debut album by Heart. If you didn't know about Heart and how they are women in music, well, first of all, the album cover is two women. Um, but yeah, Heart was formed in Seattle, Washington by sisters Anne and Nancy Wilson. Um, so there you go. Anne and Nancy Wilson are our women in music for this next album review. Shout out to the Wilsons. Uh, yeah, so we'll be diving in pretty soon. Stay tuned. We got uh, another sit down with the Stallions coming to you later this week. We had a good one. We had a good one. DJ Ian. Yes, we did. DJ Ian. DJ Ian. All right. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, besides that, Clep, you have any uh, update on your end? You, you want to tell the people, uh, I don't know, anything? <laughs> good over here. All right. Well, I wish I had canes right now. I would just demolish. Oh, I a, could a, destroy a caniac. <laughs> yeah. Dying. Well, until next time and next canes meal, my name is Bruce. I'm Clip. And you know, this has been another episode of Vinyl Stallions. Go Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>